All right, so as you guys saw me draw in there, we're going to be making a crayfish lure. So it should be a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. All right, so here's a really rough shape out of it so far. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to add legs yet, but we'll figure it out as we go, and it should be pretty fun. So there it is, and now it's time to get to the drummel. Special shout out to Daryl here. Thank you so much for the kind comment, and I love to read it. And if you guys don't know already, I have tried this in the past, but it's definitely fun to update and try to see how I've progressed in making lures. So I hope you enjoy the video, Daryl, and thank you for the awesome comment. All right, so here's where we're at right now, and uh, all I did really is add a couple of details here with my Dremel, and uh, all I did there was uh, take the center of the Dremel bit and go along those lines that I marked with a pencil and put little triangles in the middle. And I want to make them defined, but not too defined to the point where like it was kind of unrealistic so I had those little notches for the tail fin and the line tie is going to be on the back here because if you don't know already uh, crawfish actually swim backwards when they're kind of being chased by a predator so that's pretty interesting and uh, we'll see how the action ends up but I think the next step here is to cut off those little claws and uh, get them all prepared for adding an attachment uh, so we'll see how that goes and I have a couple ideas on how to hollow out the inside there to kind of make a, a joint seem smooth but also allow it to have movement so We'll give that a shot, but there it is, and we'll get to the next step. All right, so here we are right now. We got the body and also the claws here. I uh, end up drilling the holes there for where the joint connection is going to be on both of those, and then I also put the dots here in Sharpie on where I'm going to drill the rest. So um, I also am going to add a line tie in the back, and I'm debating on whether or not I should put lead in this thicker middle section right here. Um, maybe that'll let it sink just a little bit, and uh, not be as much of a top water, but I'm not quite sure yet. I think it'd be pretty cool to see a, see a bass explode on a top water crawfish, but I'm not quite sure yet. So we'll see what I end up doing, and uh, there we are. So now it's time to finish drilling everything. I don't know if you guys can see there, but that little black hole there is where the uh, hook hanger is going to come out of. And so I have those on both the end claws here, and that's where I'm going to put that a hook hanger and attach the hooks on the end there so it will be coming out of the claw but i think it should still have a cool uh realistic looking effect so now i'm going to sand this up a bunch and get to adding the detail but there it is all right so this is what i was talking about with the claws to kind of add those hook hangers right into those but i'm gonna wait till after i'm done painting and after it's like all clear coated and everything just to add those connections just so that way um everything looks good and you can clearly tell that there's like a, a claw there instead of just a a blue section at the end so by the way we're gonna be painting this blue and red to kind of act like it's like a change in color because crawfish have a really cool effect of doing that so there's the claws and then i also added uh the rear line tie there and uh now we got to go on to adding the joints the cool thing about crawfish is that uh, their color can change drastically during their molting period. That's what I meant when I was talking about how I'm going to paint this one blue and reddish. So their color can be affected by different things like water color, what they eat, and also the stage of molding that they're in. So basically, um, this one that I'm going to be making is going to be in an a earlier stage, not closer to the end of molting because it's only going to be half one color and then fading into the other color. But basically, uh, bass and other predator fish kind of, it's really cool how smart they are. They strategically try to hunt these crawfish. And whenever they see one, say there's one next to the other, one's in a, a molting period, the other one is not. They would go after the molting crawfish because they have a softer shell and are easier to be eaten and digested. So they really are really cool uh, creatures. And I think it's definitely a fun project to try to make. But that's basically the colors that go into them. And uh, now let's get on to the rest of the lure. All right, so here they are with the claws all together. We have a lot of movement, which is pretty good. And when we drop it in the water, those will also float up, so they won't be dangling the whole time. So that's no worry. And I accidentally cracked the, the claw there. That shows how thin this wood is. I accidentally cracked that claw, but that's all right because I just used some baking soda and super glue and fix it all up. That one's actually probably stronger than the other side, but it's pretty sweet. So there it is. I'm going to add uh, the eye sockets and then sand up a little more, and then we should be ready for painting.
All right, so here it is before clear coat. Um, this was definitely a very challenging uh, build to make, and honestly, it, it looks pretty good. It looks like a crawfish. It's recognizable, but I definitely know what I can fix for the next time by making the head a little bigger and adding more details to the head area. But overall, I think it looks pretty cool, and I think it'll look even cooler after clear coat. So let's get to that. All right, so here's the lure right now. Uh, the joints are a little jammed up right now just because I added the glue and connected them. So it's all dry and everything. It's just uh, just early joints. So those will loosen up eventually. But I think this lure could do some really cool stuff. Uh, obviously, it's hard to show here in the fish tank. But um, over the summertime and everything, when the when the summer uh, top water bite's working really well, I think it's be a fun, really fun lure to work. It kind of does like barrel rolls and the twitch is pretty cool. So I think it'd be really fun to see a bass explode on this, but uh, I definitely want to make some more topwater baits in the future and maybe some topwater glide baits or cool stuff like that. So yeah, it's ended up pretty cool and I'm happy with it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the lure making and the video as much as I did. And if you have any ideas, like always, leave them down in the comments and I'll give them a look. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.